it's Rudy at Clodden Painting Studio here and welcome to part two of Introduction to Napoleonics, a little series on demystifying uh, Napoleonic wargaming. Um, in this episode we're going to look at French flank companies. In the last video looked at painting um, a French line infantryman in a great coat. Um, you can see in the centre of the three here. That's what we churned out. Um, we call that Fusilier part of one of the centre companies. In a French battalion, um, you would have six companies total, four centre companies and two flank companies. Um, the biggest, toughest men would be in the, the Grenadiers on the right flank and the smallest, most agile, most able to think to them for themselves would be in the Voltigeurs on the left flank. Um, and there's a few differences in terms of um, how these troops um, performed for real. Um, that translates into slightly different things um, on the tabletop. Your Voltigeurs will do your um, skirmishing in front of the main line. Um, in some games, Grenadiers will be um, <clears throat> a bit better. Um, games like Sharp Practice, where we sort of break down into small groups, um, a Grenadier will uh, outdo um, a, uh, <clears throat> a line fusilier in combat, um, and the Voltigeur will be able to, to move a bit quicker, um, pick out officers um, with his musket in a bit more impressive, uh, impressive, <coughs> impressive shooting. Um, the miniatures that we have here have been painted in more or less the same way as the line infantrymen in the last video, except I've used um, browns instead of greys for the, the great coat and an off-white for the shackle. So um, I won't go over the process. Um, I'll link to the first video and in the description below I'll put the different colours that I used to, to get that brown uh, great coat there. Um, the many in the centre was from Warlord Games. Um, the flank company miniatures I have here are from um, Victrix, uh, plastic again. And it's worth having a little look at um, what the differences are between um, a centre company model and a flank company model, so that when you're putting them together, um, you get the um, right heads um, and backpacks and, and things. So, um, the centre company uh, model that we did last time, um, I can see if we look at the, the back here, um, he is lacking a short sword um, and they are present on a lot of flank company miniatures. Now technically um, the short swords were given up by Voltigeurs um, in certainly um, 1807 uh, uh, and then 18. 12 I think there were um, calls to give them up but in reality quite a few companies hung on to them um, so we will see on this model here um, we've got a little short sword there now on the Victrix models um, these come molded onto the body um, on your um, Warlord games or um, Perry miniatures they will actually be dangling from the, the pack so when you're sticking the packs on the models um, you want to <clears throat> keep the ones with the swords for the, the elite companies. Um, the way to tell if your body is one of the flank companies um, or centre companies is really to have a look at this um, epaulette on the shoulder. These are for your flank companies. Um, Voltagers, um typically green, um, occasionally with a bit of yellow, sometimes red on top as well. The other thing to look for when you're putting them together is heads. Um, on the shackles you'll have this uh, thistle shaped pom pom. Um, vultures, um, green or uh, green green and yellow or all yellow. Perfectly fine ways to, to paint them up. Um, the grenadiers, they would have red pom poms and shoulder epaulettes as well. The final detail on the short sword um, is there is a knot there, uh, red for Grenadiers and uh, green for Voltagers. Now, I was going to take a moment to actually talk about the um, Victrix 
risk models that we have here because um, when looking at buying um, different minis, trying to get this to focus, um, it's worth looking not just at the title of what's on the box, um, but also having a, a read of the um, descriptions that are given. Um, these minis are from the Vitrix uh, Middle Guard, who were um, a more elite formation within the Napoleon's ranks. Napoleon's Middle Imperial Guard is the, the set to look for. Um, but this is a very cleverly designed set. All the models are, are in great coats, um, and some can be um, constructed into different poses, march attack, charging, um, firing, loading. In this little blue box here, it says remove top of plume to make a pom pom. So there are multiple heads supplied in this set. Um, you get a separate sprue, which has a wonderful set of heads here, and each head has thistle shaped um, pom pom on top, so it makes them perfect for um, elite companies of, of line battalions. But funnily enough, you need to chop the top of that thistle bit off to make. Um, a head for someone in the middle guard. So you're getting lots of options here. Um, you can also uh, use one with the thistle chopped off to make a light infantry battalion. Um, now technically again these were asked to give up the, the short sword um, but some um, regiments evidently uh, didn't um, and up till 1814 having the epaulettes on the shoulders um, was something that uh, quite a few of the uh, light infantry regiments still did um, so as well as making them into middle guard light infantry regiments <coughs> um, and line elite companies as if that wasn't enough the sprues are actually for the sets you know, old Guard, Grenadiers and um, Chasseurs. So in a box of 60 models which you can get for about 25 quid um, you have the option to basically build um, Middle Guard, Imperial Guard, both the Old Guard Grenadiers and Old Guard Chasseurs um, and Elite Companies for your Line Regiments and also Legere or Light Infantry Regiments as well. So I think the Vitrix Middle Imperial Guard is one of the uh, most versatile boxes um, of Napoleonic French troops you can get. Um, so much so that with the Warlord Games min miniatures I was using last time, the Elite Company miniatures that we get in there, um, I'm doing a little bit of conversion work on um, to simply change them into um, line fusiliers. As you can see, we come with some epaulettes um, and two um, straps over the shoulders going across the chest. And um, the second one is to hold on to um, the short sword. So with a little bit of fine work with a scalpel, you can trim back those epaulettes, remove the strap from under the arm, and also from across the, the chest. Um, you might need to tidy up with a bit of green stuff or other modelling putty. Um, I haven't felt the need here. Um, and I've taken one of the heads <coughs> um, from the fusiliers and stuck that on. You get plenty enough in a box um, to be able to, to do so. So from um, that set which supplies um, 16 fusiliers, 8 um, flank company uh, yeah, 24 in the box. Um, I'm actually changing that into 24 um, line fusiliers or, or center company models and I'll be using the Victrix um, for flying company models. And it just sort of <clears throat> um, means no models are going to waste. So, definitely look at the middle guard uh, box set if you're wanting to get um, plastic French and great coats. 
um, you can put together nice little skirmish stands like um, this group of six which is perfect for sharp practice and if you combine um, these models with um, center companies from one of the other manufacturers you can pretty quickly get a battalion together um, for larger um, games like black powder um, great animation on them I think that the, the faces in particular are excellent um, and should you uh, wish you can also then build an Imperial Guard Old Grenadier Regiment as well, which I think is what every French player eventually wants to do So thanks sir, for watching. It's a bit waffly um, in parts there. Um, I hope you enjoy. If you've got any feedback, please um, drop things in the comments below um, And I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye